Welcome to Albion TV presents the AO Daily Show, your source of real news in an unreal world, keeping you up to date on the latest news, events, and the great community of Albion Online. Today is Tuesday the... Oh. That's Friday. Chosen. I I'm reading the notes <laughs> that you gave me. It says Tuesday the I, 29th I, of I, June. I didn't do any of that. Today is Friday... <laughs> The 2nd of July, and I am your host, The Chosen One, and joining me today, the man who does not give two craps about the date, it's my co-host, Bogle. How you doing today, Bogle? I'm doing very well. I'm glad you didn't read it as a June 2nd, because that was on the stream well, the, oh, earlier. Oh, okay, so July. on the stream, it actually... I'm talking, dude. Um, I wanted to show the, the, the first thing you mentioned, the, the new coat of paint, right? Um, <laughs> the... You mentioned that the zones get a, a sort of a layout redesign too, but mm -hmm. in the news post, we actually have a little bit of a screenshot um, of what Bridgewatch might look like. And if we take a closer look at some of the aesthetics here, then you can discover some of these palm trees that aren't there. Um, I think some of the uh, stones look a little different. Even in the video, they showed a little bit of a remake of some of the environment art. Um, so th that of course works together, right? If if you redesign the layout of a zone, then you can might, you might as well just uh, use some of the updated uh, assets, I guess. Um, and and that's something that has been in in talks for quite a while. Um, and it's it's great to see it finally making it into the game. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, whatever layout changes that that would happen, um are great i don't know if everything's going to happen this, at the same time because i remember from way past that they said that it might be a slightly gradual process true um, i mean this is something like i feel like i embellished a little bit on stuff we have heard in the past hmm. when talking with the map designers and things they wanted to do but it sounds like that the stuff they wanted to do is where they're at now right 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 yeah um, what you might want to do is give an example of that location in um, Bridgewatch. You can teleport to me, which is showing that spot. So you can show the new picture and the old picture kind of like in juxtaposition. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So wait, where is that guy next to the thing? That's sort of here, right? There. And I'm comparing that... It's a little brighter. I don't know if it's because of the day of the time of the day. Um, but it looks a little bit more colorful. It looks less dry. Yeah. Like it, it looks like it things, it's like more of an oasis. Like when you go back to the other one, it feels like this is where somebody would want to live instead of the current bridge watch is very dry and dusty, has a lot of grass around it, like shrub grass. This looks more like an oasis. I like this. I, I see chat saying um, cartoony look, uh, specifically Elder Balamp <laughs> saying he likes the more cartoony style. And I, I have to be, uh, I'm on the same side of things. I, I like a little bit more vibrant colors. Um, and some of the of parts from that video actually show a different biome. I think that the wood biome as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, we've seen the wood biome before. We've gotten to take a look at that zone before. Yeah, but that's I was going to say that's illegal, but no, we we saw that in a testing version, and it mm -hmm. it does have a lot more vibrant colors, and it it looks better, guys. Um, it it, it yeah. looks better. It pops is how I described it, and everybody was really excited uh, when I mentioned, "Hey, is this supposed to be on here?" And they're like, "Yeah, it's a hidden treasure for you guys to find." They had like one zone that was updated on the uh, the test server for a short period of time. It was cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, I like redesigning. I like updating, um, and especially if if it's more purpose driven, that that's always great to hear. Um, let's see what else is in this announcement. Uh, biome appearance upgrade, graphics on higher tier areas, layouts. Um, clear theme recognizable from the region map okay i mean yeah we talked about that i suppose yeah 
Mm, new and upgraded activities, treasure sites, you mentioned that. Changing from static to dynamic spawning. Mm -hmm. um, open world mobs with a chance to upgrade into stronger versions over time. Increasing value of unexplored regions. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Now I have to go out, Charles, and I have to walk around. And don't just stumble outside of my hideout and, you know, pop a map or something. I might actually have to find a few dudes and go like, hey, let's ride three zones over. That's, uh, that might be a challenge, dude. <laughs> It could be. It could be a challenge, Bogum. I think there's going to see some interesting things happening out there in the world as far as dynamic spawns and getting people to go out and roam the world. There is an emphasis to try to get people to not just do dungeons as groups, but roam the world as groups. Go out there and make that outland world feel alive. Run into people, get into fights, and have things to fight over, I think is the emphasis going forward. I mean, we we spent over the last two years spent a little bit of time, I think, on the instance part, and it's great to to come back around to the open world. Um, yeah, but next part of that news announcement post is the overlays, work. right? Or the the post that go, does it skip overlays? I mean, I I guess it says upgraded world map. With yeah. different overlays showing the current availability of resources and high value creatures. Current availability. So that to me, that means I can click on the map and see what area has the most available things to gather or kill. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there was some debate whether this was some kind of bonus that was done through growth over time or if it was the availability. And I think that all evidence is starting to point to it really being the percentage of mobs left in the zone or the percentage of resources to gather that are left in the zone for you to go get. One of the problems in Albion is that everybody's jammed into just a few areas. Say hello to Retri. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, everything is gone in that area. In Red Tree, you can't even spawn dungeons. There's too many of them already spawned. You have to go somewhere else. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's... The players of Albion need to know where they should be headed to. And unless you're willing to run around, it's very hard to find out. Is it like an inverse heat map sort of thing? Kind of, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Though I imagine if a zone says 100% on the map... It won't be for long. It won't be for long. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I like it. Interesting. Like, I like. Um, next... Great way to spread people around, I think. Hopefully. Next part on the news post is the mock-up of elite the, skills. Yeah, the elite levels, the levels for your skills. Levels, yes, yeah. elite levels for your skills. You spend your fame credits to increase your mastery. And mm -hmm. this will be interesting how this works and how expensive it is and how much grinding you have to do and how much... Will this cost silver? I don't know. Because when you currently spend your fame credits, it does... Does cost something, doesn't it, Bogle? On the left, on the screenshot, it says a silver amount and a, a fame credit uh, amount. Eef. And it goes to 120, uh, which presumably is the mastery, right? So yeah. mastery would then go from... Um, from 100 to 120, but... but um, this is, is a mock-up. So it doesn't say work in progress on the bottom. Yeah, um, it, it, it should say work in should, progress. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Because this if, is definitely if you work in progress. dissect this a little bit, uh, it's confusing why Depth Fiber Harvester has a mastery level um, because right now you can't uh, spend fame credits for your fiber harvesting. Um, and Fiber Harvester doesn't have played shoes. So, <laughs> uh, I I don't know, but I think it's it's an interesting. I'm I'm assuming it it would apply for the combat stuff. They didn't say anything about crafting. They didn't say anything about gathering. Um, I am assuming personally it will apply for combat skills. 
mastery. Um, they also said that you can sort of display that to others. Um, so if you inspect somebody, probably it will show up somewhere, right? Maybe hmm. um, if, if you look at a player and then you go inspect him, maybe on the side of the UI, there's a little note that says, careful, scary. He's really good at this weapon. It glows purple and green. Hmm. I mean, it, it, it fits nicely on there, right? On mm -hmm. the inspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hmm. And, and in the video, we saw some of the artists working, I think, on some of the icons that people would probably be able to see then. And uh, yeah, I, I, I know that when you PvP, especially in smaller groups, a lot of people have the inspect button bound to something accessible, easily accessible, and then everybody checks the other person's gear first. Um, yeah, you have to yeah. constantly in corrupted dungeons know what the other person's doing so you can adjust your helm appropriately and probably your food as well. Um, maybe even change your your, posh, your your potion out and put whatever pot you need there, whether it's resistance or healing or invisibility, whatever it, you want to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. So it's it's to me it's like another warning sign that that I need to watch out more about a specific thing because it hits harder mm -hmm. or potentially that I can just go for all, all in, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, next thing on the, on the news post then is a mention of a personal challenge concurrent with current guild seasons. Yeah. So right now, it, things you do for the guild in the current season don't give you a lot of things. And that has always been one of the critique points on on the guild season rankings right mm -hmm. and you know what this is to me it's a huge buff to 5v5 crystal league players who are going to earn a lot of season points that they can then spend for rewards and when you spend your points on rewards it says that it increases your guild season progress so it's now it, it looks like Crystal League players will now be able to double dip. They'll uh, get... Uh, yeah, okay. Isn't that... Do, do you agree with me? Does it sound like the activities I, that they I were talking about were the ones that would thinking. give season points? I, yeah. I, w well, I wasn't even thinking about Crystal League. Um, I like I liked that. Nobody ever does. That, <laughs> that thing. But, I mean, it says players can earn points for participating in PvP and Outlands PvP ac PvE activities. Um, I would assume that I guess Crystal Lake falls under that, but it's a wider range of things to do than just the, the things that generate the existing season points. M maybe, 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 maybe. maybe um, hmm. yeah, hmm. Well, we don't know, uh, oh, yeah. exactly, but I get that impression. Like when I start adding things together, I'm going, oh, these PvPers are going to make out like bandits. Everybody and should they do Crystal do. League, I guess. Hey, I guess you should. Bogle, we're going to be doing Crystal League. Mm. We're going to get good. <laughs> People are going to hire us. We're going to be mercenaries. We're going to go out there to the highest bidder. No biases. We're, we'll only go to who pays us the most. Who will pay and, for a uh, level one Crystal League team shows? I don't know how many season points they get. 50. I don't know. Not a lot. Um, what is it? Uh, next Thursday? Hopefully. Yeah, okay. Here, here on the UTC, channel, yeah. some Albion TV casters trying their hand at some Crystal League level ones. Should be a, a fun disaster. I mean, fun entertainment purpose thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on uh, from that to, I guess, Power Vortexes and Power Crystals. It sounds like what will happen is a power vortex will appear on the map and everybody can run to it. And after a period of time, a power crystal will form. You can pick up that power crystal. It demounts your character. Your character shows up on the map. You have to walk it back to your territory or hideout. And if you do, it'll boost your territory level or your hideout crafting bonus. What's a territory level? The... The one that decides your tower to level. So your oh. tower goes up. One of the things that people have been asking for, it's been a, a quite a common 
request is that they would like to have another way to level their tower other than the Crystal League, because not all guilds can afford to have a 5v5 Crystal League team mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, do it on the regular basis that you need to for the lower levels. Up until five, you, it, you have to do it a couple of times a week. So it's you know, an alter it's, alternative way to level your mm -hmm. tower? Yes. And then oh. you don't have to refresh that level as often. Once they get to the higher levels, they last, you know, a, a level eight lasts the whole month. So, you know, it's, it's good to level these things up. In here, it says carry to territories or hideouts to boost a level or crafting bonuses. Now, I'm wondering if I don't think you can level up hideouts that way. That no, would... it doesn't sound like you can level hideouts that way. When I mean, uh, Robin Hankey like did, that's the problem. Well, it's no, when he some... says it in the video, yeah. he says level your towers or boost the the crafting. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Bonus. Okay. So, like, and it was one for one and one for the other. Now, I had heard of other options uh, earlier in the, the season. There. Were, we're talking about random bonuses and stuff, but it does not appear that that is part of this. From what it sounds like, this straight levels your tower or increases the the bonus of your hideout for the crafting bonus, which is interesting. And we'll see if anything else develops um, over time, because I'm sure we'll hear more. I'm prob They will probably release like a full spec of this at some point. Mm -hmm. Um but that's, I think, a little early. I think we'll have to wait a few more weeks for the actual bonuses that you can get from these crystals. Um, and then, of course, you once they you see them, then you sort of have to go to them, cap, take them on, uh, demount, and, and then sort of walk back to your hideout, um, which if the crystal spiders that were introduced with the last patch tell us anything, um, that might be cause for, for trouble, which is nice. Yeah, but but I think that's it from from the announcement. Um, we have to go back to the stuff that's not in the in the uh, the written out post. Uh, specifically, um, at the very end of it, there is a little bit of a preview to what the I don't know if it's the improved UI or a full rework of the rerolling system is. Mm -hmm. I want to show that big screen here. Um, so right now, when you re-roll your things, it doesn't say on the left side um, what kind of quality you get. Uh, and apparently, Masterpiece chance for re-rolling is 1%, guys. So that's the first time it's sort of uh, visible in-game, which is great. It's currently a work in progress, and mm -hmm. that is for uh, experimental use only. And we do not know if those are the real percentages. And They are don't... close, if not equal to the base of what it's in game right now. Oh cool. No, I, I I've re-rolled quite a bit in the past, sir. <laughs> he, he's he marks them all down too. Um but the new thing is that you can uh, apparently re-roll more things at once here. It does 85 things at once. 85 items, which is is maybe new. Um but the other thing that they bring up is I think it's a rework for the UI of the fee usage for buildings right so if if you didn't know you can feed buildings that are in hideouts that are in the cities and to understand what you get as a reward for feeding these um it's not very easy to look at the ui and see what it does and i think that part is finally getting another rework um this this style of ui has been uh so slowly applied to most of the game ui and i think it's been a long process since they, they tackled the old UI. And I, and I think they're going into the really, really hidden areas now, Shazen, which is good. Yeah. I, it, well, there's so... That's the thing. Albion has so many hidden little things. I can't believe that it, mm. it's an incredibly deep game and it's hard to find the information on everything mm. and to update all of the UI is... It's, it's difficult and incredible and congratulations to them for continuing this process. We have two winners, though, Bogle. Okay. Let's talk about winners Win instead of two weapons. <laughs> and Tenchi Max. You have oh. won the raffle. 
whispering me to claim your prize. I believe Quinn X has already figured it out. Congratulations. Um, but Bogle. Yes, we have to talk about the last that, part. You want to talk about that last part where the guy wearing the fancy gloves does a bunch of kicks. Correct. We don't have a name. We have no idea what this is. The speculation part is the fun thing about it. And uh, apparently we get weird boxers or ninjas in Ibian now. So Does he punch it all or do we see him just kick? Uh, I do have to go frame by frame, does this? I'm too yeah, like, I'm too it's smart. interesting. I want to know if he's just got a different E from something else. Because that looks like that could be one skill, right? Well, that's a knockout, right? And then it's a kick. And then it's a jump. Okay. So that's three different things. You think that's three different sk skills at once? Not yeah. just one thing that does three things. You remember Maybe. Perry, right? <laughs> yeah, but that didn't have three animations. I think that only had one animation. They only had one animation. It's true. Yeah. That's a lot of animation for one skill, though. I mean, if we reference the Albion Online AMA that we had a week back, then they uh, hinted at new weapons possibly. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just that. I'm going to go and lean out the door to the window and say it's... That's the new weapon that we get. I don't know if it's but, a new weapon line or if well, it's just Well, that's why, like, if it's Bogle, if it's two I mean, it different skills, it yeah. has to be a different weapon line. True. Like, hmm. if it's a smash on the ground, yeah. if it's a kick followed by a leaping kick, that makes me think that there's a line that has smashes and kicks, and then that the leaping kick would be your E. If it was one of the lines we already have, such as the dagger line or the staff line, you'd, well, ooh, actually it could be staff line, but with different animations? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Ah, I'm, I'm hoping for ah. some kind of disruptive melee bruiser play style. Well, it, would it be a whole? That's where you, I'm. What I'm doing is speculating here. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. it a line where you have a Q that does a smash with your fist, a you W that does a kick in a knock up, and then a E that does a leap into the air and a crash? Or is it just the E on one line where it does all of them? Or is it such a mock up and a just a, a fake thing that is no. just showing what could possibly be, and it's it's three skills that they don't actually have. No, 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 no. I'm going to go and just say, you know what I want? I, I want a new line, so I'm going to decide that it's a new line. That That's my <laughs> that's my approach now. I would like to see a new weapon line. I'm, I'm going to present it as such. Okay. Yeah. It's not very neutral, but whatever. I'm, I'll, I'll take it. Because, um, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gonna say it could be concussive blow and forceful swing. Uh, oh, wait, that's crafting. Um, I don't know, dude. I'm just saying, it, like, look at the look at the look at the image, and and I'll I'll read what each one do. Concussive blow is which one? Uh huh. Lend. I don't know, man. I don't know. Forceful swing. Which one is that? That's hurricane. It's the blue one. Yeah. Knocking back people. Hmm. Now rewind and show again. This is we're really breaking this down. We're going full Star Wars on this, Bogle. Man, I really want this to be uh, a, a new thing, man. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do a new. No, I don't want, I don't want to. No. You won't even show the video. I'm just, I'm you won't even show the video. <laughs> He's like, no, no, we're not doing it. I just did it. Look. Hmm. Knock. Oh, oh. Yeah, I, I don't. Yep. I don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> you, I, how do you not? That's what it is. That's I what it is. It. It's, it's, it's 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 no, it's no. it's concussive blow, and, I and then forceful decided. swing. 
I'm I'm not I'm going to refuse your uh I want theories. I want Chad's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Let let's talk about other things. I think we're done with that topic. Let <laughs> Bogus, like we need to get out of here now, yes. quick for the hills. Yes, 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 yes. Um, any other hidden things in that video that we didn't show, guys? Anything that we missed? Well, there might be. I think we went pretty, you know, in depth on one part of it. If we did that much of a view on the rest of it, maybe we could figure out what everything is. Mm. But I think it's time to move on to patch eight. All right, all right, all right. What, what? Patch 8, June 30th, three days ago. What's that about? What's the patch about, Bogle? Yeah. Like, like, you're like, let's talk about Patch 8. What's that and I'm about? Like, like, I'm, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you went through what's straight patch from... about? Yeah. All right, the patch Anything is about, cool you there? know, uh, it's the early season patch where uh -huh. they're fixing things that, you know, need to be changed. Okay. So just a couple of quick changes to skills. Yeah. It's getting in the early season stuff, such as the statue for sun. It's now in the game along with the statues for Mudhouse and Marhalika. There are increased rewards for Hellgates across the board, the lethal Hellgates. This is the rumored increase in rewards. The overall value has been increased in 2v2s by 10%, fives by 20%, and 10's got a 30% buff to rewards. That's huge, Bogle. 30% mm -hmm. on Hellgates, which had already been buffed, and people were already saying, that's pretty good. I now they're going to be real good. Yeah. Okay, if, if you say so, I'm going to trust you, man. Well, here's something you can talk about, Bogle, and you do do this. You can tell me all about condensed marketplace notifications. Bogle? Yes, I was muted. Um, you only get a mail now when something completely sold or expires. Um, as somebody who does a lot of buying and selling on the marketplace, who has hundreds of orders... Uh, you couldn't possibly read them all in the previous iteration, and now you only get a notification when you sort of have to restock something, uh, which is great. Um, I've I've seen that for the last two days now, and it's already been uh, very much better on in terms of knowing and actually getting useful information from your mail. Um, I know it, it's it wasn't for everybody uh, or as important for everybody for the but for the marketeers and the people who you know maybe need to stock some of the guild marketplaces that's a big thing. Um, it it's it looks small but it's a big 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 quality of life thing. Yes, absolutely, big quality of life change. You know what else is a quality of life change? Nerfs to maces. Nerfs to maces. Oh my god, those one-handed maces, Bogle. You don't you have to run screaming. Uh... I'm still going to run screaming. I'm still going to run screaming. Let's be real clear. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that that's change reducing of the stun duration. Is that a lot? It's, 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 it's almost half a second. Yeah. Okay. That might save me. One-handed maces are... I can run to the back of them. I, I, I might be able to... Uh... Intended to be the damage-oriented bruiser. Yeah, they are. But their current combination of damage, CC, and mobility makes them too strong of an all-rounder in many fields. Hence, the stun duration shortened. Additionally, there's a bug fix for the invulnerability duration. Okay. Okay. That seems fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, the axes, the requirement of maintaining adrenaline boost with auto attacks made it too difficult to use this ability to chase enemies. In order to give axes a better chance of staying on enemies without allowing an adrenaline boost for free disengages, this ability will now stay active with any direct damage. E examples are um, rending, spin, or whirlwind. Nice. Okay. So, all right. 
And uh, faction changes. I want to go over these really quick because one of them is huge. Huge, Bogle. Faction outposts can no longer be claimed by mounted players. I might do faction warfare again. Nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. It, that is... That's huge. That's huge, guys. Gigantic. Uh, the roads of Avalon no longer being entered. You can no longer enter them while you're flagged for a city faction. That's minor. There were occasional people who'd run away while you're trying to kill them. Um, improved message feedback during faction outpost captures. That's great because you need to have good information. It's nothing compared to the frustration, though, from those guys on the bears, Bogle. Hmm. That's huge. Like a bear. It's almost mammoth proportions. Any interesting fixes in here? Uh, some UI cleanup. Um, average IP display. And the party finder, that's good for guilds. Uh, lunging strike could hit the same enemy twice. That's the biggest one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's mm -hmm. pretty short and sweet, though. All right. Well, let's get on to the new ones really quick. And we're going to be going over this uh, just a little bit today because these NDA cha uh, changes tend to last for quite a while. And Retroman has been giving pretty in-depth notes now on these. And we, if we were to read each one, it would be an entire show. Like it would be an hour of us just reading. This is what's going on with this weapon, and and this is what's changing with it, and why. So we're gonna break it down and just do a, a couple each show, and, and make that a bit more palatable for everybody. Do you think, Bogle? Yeah, I mean these are from Retroman, the the game designer responsible for for combat balance, and this is the NDA testing thread where current. Uh, testing variations of of weapon skills and and new iterations are publicly announced so everybody has the same chance at guessing uh the impact of these on the meta um and it's a long list i i posted it into the twitch chat if you want to read all of them the uh, two of them in there are already live and you wanted to pick one or two from the others so there's a uh, another axe addition and a dagger we work a fire staff new new slot q slot ability a frost staff glacial staff rework wow everything's getting i mean there's massive changes across the board this guy does work that's all i'm saying is he's sword constantly rework? <laughs> yeah well swords i mean let's let's read that okay swords is something i think we can talk about um, unfortunately, Bogle, I cannot stay late today, so we will only be able to do a, a brief summary of probably swords, and that will do it for us today. Mm -hmm. um, but overhauling various older and rarely used abilities in the weapon line to bring this weapon back in line, uh, or this weapon line back to the spotlight. We also gave swords the old mobility increase back on its heroic charges to help staying on targets while also reducing some of the E ability cooldowns to emphasize a more dynamic play style. Mm. Mm, okay. Okay. I mean, right off the bat, they're getting a 3% buff to that movement speed and attack speed on that heroic charges. So mm -hmm. that'll stack up pretty good for you. Uh, hamstring on all swords. If you have a heroic charge when casting, you can now Cast a follow-up... Oh. Oh, follow-up attack, this yeah. Attack for three seconds. You you can now cast a follow-up attack that's, for that's three new, seconds. New, yeah, yeah. Okay, so follow-up consumes one heroic charge and is a ground target at a five-meter distance leap, which hits enemies in the three-meter radius along with another hamstring effect. Interesting. Um, we, we get a bunch of jumping swords soon. And Sweet. slow strength goes from 38% to 25%, but now stacks two times. Interesting. That's a... Uh, okay. It seems Very like interesting. It's, okay. it's much more agile now, the sword mm -hmm. line. Um, well, yeah. that's for all swords across the board yeah, with, yeah, the, yeah. with the hamstring. Let's go into spinning blades on dual swords. Do you want to read that one? Uh, jump, 
What's a jump end position? Like where, where you, you land? end at the yeah. Okay. Uh, it's offset, so it, you can cover less distance, but it makes it easier to space the impact to be able to. What is this? To be able to an enemy. That doesn't make quite sense. Um, without the enemy interrupting you mid air. Uh, okay, so you can you can use it more often, and you can use it better. Is that what it says, guys? I don't quite understand. Uh, I think is what it's saying is that you don't land directly on your target now. You mm -hmm. land three meters away. I so see. like that's what I'm like. It's an end position offset. So you leap. And so your sword is in front of you and you hit them. Uh, but okay. you're kind of like near them with spinning blades. So like you kind of do like a, a spin and attack. Right. Um, so the cooldown's been reduced. And the max health damage versus players has been reduced as well because I think it's it just intended to be faster now overall. Like you just can do it more and make it part of your continuous follow up. Like you're gaining mobility to go after them because it's now a a, a quicker cooldown. Mighty swing on the Clarent Blade. Slice the air to shoot a demonic wave into the target direction, piercing through enemies and dealing damage, consuming all heroic charges for a secondary effect if a projectile hits an enemy. One of three different uh, effects depending on the amount of heroic charges, um, increased damage or interrupt of spellcasting or slow. Interesting, interesting. Okay. That's going to be hard to manage, like proper heroic cooldown stuff. Wow. Uh, heroic charges. Hmm. That seems like a, a hard. Ability does it, to does use. it, does it add each of the effect? Oh, you only get one effect depending on the. Oh, yeah, gee. Yeah. Now, see, I would get this if it, if it added the effect on the more heroic charges you had, you had more effects. Okay. Cause. It's with interrupting an enemy spell casting, which is an absolutely fantastic. That's an absolutely fantastic skill. But you have to have exactly two heroic charges. Right. And that makes it very unpredictable. The best thing about interrupts is they're predictable. Slowing a character for 25%. Well, I mean, with the combination of hamstring and being able to get 50%, so that'd be 75% slow. Hmm. Okay. Well, no, no, I don't think you can do that because you'd have to use up your heroic chart. Your I'm, hamstring I'm picturing charges. a lot of jumping swords in, in that in that future. It's kind of fun, but kind of scary too. I, I want to see how that works with the mighty swing because that sounds complicated. Yeah. And ten percent for three seconds versus the slowdown for two seconds. Um, if it eats all your charges, maybe. Hmm. Bogle. That's one to keep an eye on. I think we're going to see a lot of work going on with that spell because I like the concept, but with interrupt being at two, it seems like a very hard one. Like interrupts, the most important thing about them is to have them being predictable and usable when you need them, yeah. right? That's yeah. And if it's not, then it just becomes a like a misplaced situation there. Like it, it I, I don't know where it'll fit. Um, all right. Majestic smash on the Kingmaker. Widen the hitbox of smash to make the follow-up attacks more reliable. Okay. And lower cooldown. And, re yeah. and reduce the cooldown. Okay. That that seems really easy to understand. Yeah. All right. There's there's way more proposed changes that are in testing, guys. Um, uh, so even a whole sort of addition rule set to the uh, Corrupted Dungeons. So... Uh, Definitely go ahead and, and read these if you're the kind of person who likes um, patch notes and a per upcoming potential in-testing uh, stuff. I'll link it again in Twitch chat so you guys can can take a look. Um, yeah, we, we might discuss one or two of these in the future, maybe next week. Uh, probably buy them. Some of them will already have changed a little bit based on the testing. I know there is a play test set for early next week where some of this might be on the table. Um, so that's a thing to, to follow 
uh, how that will develop. Um, and I think the last thing we have to do for today is uh, maybe draw another raffle and yeah, going to draw people, another raffle and remind people of an AMA that happened what seven eight days ago. Um, oh, yeah, we wanted to talk about a couple of things from that really quick. I mean, I I, I just want to remind people and, and link them to it because there was an AMA on on Reddit where the devs went to the MMORPG subreddit and answered a bunch of questions. And the best thing you can do is look at the user account. I'll, I'll link it in Twitch chat as well. And that has all the answers to all the questions. You can you can look at the the context of that question, and then it comes up and it has um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Um, some of that has more details in the dev talk that we discussed earlier today, mm-hmm. but there are other things like uh, your Huge favorite things. things. Yes. Yeah, well, there's say, say a couple things thing. that oh, I'm going to. I, I got two that I, they just really stick out to me, like big one is the idea of albion coming to consoles in the future in the coming years not this year but in the coming years i think that's amazing and i think this game would do fantastic on the playstation xbox or switch i would love to see it um and the other one which i think impacts players more than it impacts me would be the idea of having servers in different parts of the world while still maintaining the single shard identity the thing that makes albion absolutely fantastic is the fact that everybody plays on a single server and it makes it difficult because some people have worse ping than others and while albion has been a game that's been designed around the ability to have a higher ping and still be successful because it's a more tactical than twitch based game it i have to say um that would be amazing for people if they could pull it off i don't know there's no timetable for this and it's still, it still sounds like it's very theoretical, but the idea of having servers around the world so that we all have a more similar ping would be fantastic, especially with the rate of growth that Albion has had around the world. And, and I'd love to see it because I know the, the people down in like uh, the, the Asian uh, continents are having a much more difficult time with ping guys from australia have a, a horrible time with ping um even brazil is sometimes hard mm-hmm. so i i would love to see better pings for everybody um but that does seem a little bit more you know future further into the future yeah future I, I think, yeah i think um he said something like they are looking into it and he doesn't know if anybody else is doing it and it's it's hard and if if it was possible they would already do it and all that kind of stuff but yeah go read the ama answers from the reddit um ama and you might discover a gold nugget or two in terms of information um definitely worth uh, a, a read there and i think that at least that's it on my notes today for, for yeah. the show. Oh, no, well, we have gonna... one more thing, cooking classes. We oh, yeah, we've got classes. cooking classes tomorrow. Oh, my, I totally forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me, Bogle. Um, a member of the Albion community, uh, Tardis8, a streamer who's been streaming Albion for a bit now. Uh, he's the GM of Knights of Soul and the Soul New World Alliance. He generally streams, like, Albion content for newer players, um, his own ZVZ stuff playing in the roads when they're just doing ganking, whatever it is. It's not one of those real dedicated to one style of content. It's not like a, um, like a corrupted dungeon streamer. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's more about the community that they're trying to build. And as part of that, he's going to be doing some cooking classes with a video game theme, cooking classes with video game theme. He, He noticed that a lot of the guys in his guild don't know how to cook at all. They're just, they just order food Mm -hmm. and he's a professional chef. So he decided that tomorrow at 17 UTC, which is an hour before our show, which would give you guys some time to maybe watch it, check it out before you come watch us, you know, and uh, he's going to be breaking down a chicken, showing you how to, to take down a chicken and then <laughs> making like pasta print. One? <laughs> no, uh, well, no. When you part out a chicken, uh, have you ever parted a chicken, Bogle? With brute force. Yeah, he's going to teach you how to do it well, mm-hmm. and uh, he's going to make pasta primavera. And uh, some fresh spring summer veg and show you how to make a meal that he says is minimal prep time. We'll teach you some of the basics, even, you know, how to sharpen your knives, maybe. Um, And I think it's a good thing for people because he's right. Too many gamers don't know how to cook. And he's going to try to do some 
healthy uh, video game themed recipes for the Albion community over the coming weeks. And I think it's one of those kinds of things I want to promote. Um, I, I love the idea of, you know, building your community and doing all the things that your community needs. And we all need to eat and we should all eat better, especially this, the Americans of us. So uh, let's, let's uh, all cheer him on. I think that guy should make a series and try to cook the dishes of Albion. Yeah, well, th we talked about that. He's going to try to do some uh, Albion dishes. But, you know, that's a lot of pork. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not a lot of people eat goose. You know, it's not... Mm. Maybe you replace some of the, the the goose with some other fowl. I mean, unless we're all going to go out and buy geese. And we could do turkey, right? And it's mm. a, a tar uh, Tartarus... Eight. I'm gonna put the name in chat. Do check him out. Uh, throw that into your search bar over here on Albia or on Twitch, and and, and go follow him. Yeah, we could have a chicken. Yeah, who puts chicken in an omelet? <sighs> Eel right, wait, stew, I I frog sandwich. Um, I think we have some cool recipes. Anyways, yeah, you gotta go. Uh, that's it for the show today. We're we're uh, done with the news wrap up for today. Uh, you drew the raffle, is that right? Oh, I have one more to do. And actually, uh, uh no, I did. I I pull, pulled it. It's pool a pool echo pool echo. Congratulations! Pool and then and Tartarus uh, yeah. is here in chat right now. Oh, really? So you can just click on him. You don't even have to search or nothing. You can just click on him. And uh, one of the things that'll do is you can just go to his his stream from there. So do check out his stream and make friends. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow. I do have to get out of here. I'm sorry I can't stay longer. We will be going over the rest of those NDA changes next week and the weeks to follow. Thank you for watching. Keep it classy, Albion. We're out. <laughs>